Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Myth Busting, the show where we ask questions about the game and find out the answers so that you can become smarter and more knowledgeable players. Today's episode is another round of mini myths, that's where we take five smaller questions about the game, answer them all in one episode. So as always if you have a question you can do so by leaving a comment in the comment box down below. And our first question for today is to do with the zombie pigmen that spawn next to portals in the overworld. So the question is, do these contribute to the hostile mob cap? Now if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. We're about to go into another world to conduct a test and I'll explain everything when we get there. So what is the hostile mob cap? It is a limit to the amount of hostile mobs, i.e. these guys, the creepers, that you can have in the world at one time. Now based on where the player is, these mobs will spawn and despawn, but there'll always be a limit to how many you can have in total. Now that's for two reasons. One of those is game balance. You want the game to be fun and there not to be hundreds of hostile mobs everywhere. And the second reason is performance. Now I spawned these creepers up here on the surface a moment ago and all of them wandered into that pool and the other ones wandered into this one. Something I wanted to point out, I think creepers like water. Maybe it's a myth, maybe it's just coincidence. But anyway, we're gonna do a test and I've got a good one for you because we're gonna revisit an old farm from the second Hermitcraft world. That is the gold farm where we built massive obsidian portals to use the zombie pigmen that spawn. So the test that we're gonna do is to find out if these guys that spawn next to the portals are gonna to contribute to this mob cap. So by using my farm, we'll put it into the world, we'll get hundreds of these pigmen from the obsidian portal and then we'll be able to observe the world and see if they made a difference. So we have around 200 zombie pigmen here coming from the farm and I know you want to see it. By the way, I'm in my camera account and this guy is in game mode 1. If we fly back over here you can see the farm and it is absolutely massive. We built this thing entirely in survival on the second Hermitcraft world. It's very nice to see it again and it's good to see it's been put into use for this test. So remember that all spawning happens in proximity to the player and around here on the surface I cannot see a single hostile mob. I've been flying around for some time. As you can see it is night time so they should be able to spawn and if you remember we had some creepers that we spawned ourselves those guys were nearby and they have all despawned so it's a very good sign um, that this is making a difference. Now if we go underground these caves are going to be further away from the player but I've been exploring them and I cannot see a single hostile mob in this area at all and I'm pretty much ready to say that this does make a difference but there is one more test that I want to do and that's to move our player away from the farm so that all of these guys despawn and then we'll see some mobs spawning again and I think that'll be a confirmation that this does make a difference. So my camera account is on the other screen, it has its eyes on these zombie pigmen and what we're going to do is literally just fly away off into the distance and look for some hostile mobs. Any point now some of those zombie pigmen should in theory start despawning. They have now all despawned on my other screen and immediately we see mobs and I think that is confirmation that they do contribute to the hostile mob cap. So we have an answer to our question and it's left me wondering if this could be used to make a peaceful mode switch. That's where you spawn loads of the zombie pigmen and then you won't have any hostile mobs in your world. However, of course, if you go too far away from them, they will despawn. So maybe it's not too practical, but I thought I would mention it anyway. So on to our next question. You guys wanted to know how much damage does an arrow do when it's shot out of a dispenser? Well, I didn't expect to be shooting myself with an arrow over and over again today, but I guess it's the only way we're going to find out. So I started off with a dispenser directly in front of the player. This consistently dealt 1.5 hearts of damage. And out of curiosity, I decided to compare that to the bow. And a short pull on the bow, if you get the timing right, will also do the same amount of damage as a comparison. So then I decided what we need to do is move the dispenser around and see if anything will change the amount of damage it does. So I put it above the player by 20 blocks and when dropping arrows down it then started to do two hearts of damage. So I decided to double the distance and then it went to 2.5 hearts of damage. So I was thinking about other ways I could manipulate the damage. I decided to put water in front of the dispenser and then it did between half a heart and one and a half hearts of damage each time. And then I swapped the water out for lava and it did the same amount of damage but it also did two additional hearts of damage on top because it set the player on fire. And what I learned is that it always sets the player on fire for the same amount of time and it will always deal two extra hearts of damage. 
So I've started to suspect that the velocity and trajectory of the projectile was going to determine the amount of damage that it dealt, and fearing some complicated calculations, I decided to ask my friend Panda4994, who is known for his knowledge of the game code, and it turns out this is actually really simple. It's determined by two things. One of them is a very tiny amount of randomness, the other one is the speed of the arrow. So the speed it travels at determines the amount of damage that it deals. So by having two lots of water in front of it, we can slow the arrow down enough that we will only take half a heart of damage every single time. If the arrow actually hits us, there you go, half a heart, let's do it once more, and uh, another half a heart. So the dispensers do actually do one and a half hearts of damage, but that's the default speed that it shoots the arrow at. So if anything manipulates it on its way, then that amount of damage can be changed. And another thing I'd like to point out as well, when trying to slow down the speed of the arrow, I found out that the arrow projectile is not affected by cobwebs, which is a really nice thing to know, because you'd probably assume it was, or at least I did. Our third question this episode is to do with something that happened to me during a live stream on the Hermitcraft server. I died, unfortunately. And I died in a hole, which meant all of my items went into a single spot. Now, when I went to pick them back up again, the items came into my inventory in a similar order to how they were before, which poses a question, a little bit of a vague one, but basically we want to do some tests here to investigate and see if there's any sort of order to the way that items will leave your inventory and come back into it as well when you pick up the items off the ground. So I'm going to set up a little test, and obviously this is going to involve me killing myself, which is going to be fun. So for this test, I filled my inventory up with a whole bunch of different blocks. They all have different block IDs, which means they're not going to group up together. And I've sort of color coded them and arranged them so that we can see what order they're in. So I can use a screenshot of this video to compare it to the way that it gets picked up. I've set my spawn in a bed over there. We're simply going to hop up here, drop down and then kill ourselves. All of the items should fall into this space right here. And we click respawn and it does look like all the items are in there. So we're going to hop up here and then pick them all up in one go and look at that, that doesn't quite look like the way we dropped them but there's almost some sort of order to it or maybe not. I think we're going to have to repeat this test a few times to find out what's going on here. So on your screen are the results of six different tests and we can clearly see that there is some sort of pattern to the way that these items are being picked up and in the bottom right hand side you'll see we picked it up in the exact same way it was in our inventory as before and it's a little peculiar as to how these things get rearranged but I had a sneaky suspicion as to what was doing it so I've decided to change the test if we have a look over here there's also a bunch of items on the ground how did they get there so they've despawned now I have absolutely no idea how some items got there but anyway let's do the test what the water is going to do is push them all down into a single point so we are going to respawn over at the bed the water is going to put the items into the corner and you can see here they're sort of getting pushed up on top but this is a client side glitch if we have a look you can see we can't pick up these items so what we're going to do is walk into that corner and pick all of them up at the exact same time and they all come into our inventory in the exact same order they left so we've learned the player can pick up the items in the exact same order the reason why though i believe is because they were all put into the exact same spot. We picked them all up at the exact same time, so there was some sort of ordering in which it would come back into our inventory. So in our earlier test, when we just dropped down into the middle, I'm guessing the proximity of the items to the player defined what order it would go into our inventory as well. So we've answered a question, we've also sort of left a little bit of an open page on that one. But now we're going to move on to the next question, which is a real simple one. Do splash damage potions do damage to armor? I think this may just be one of the quickest tests we will ever do. So I've got an instant damage potion right here. We throw it at the ground, we take no damage whatsoever. However, we throw it at the ground. So the next one we're going to throw at our hitbox, which means we throw it above ourselves, it lands on our head. We've taken a lot of damage and our armor has taken none. So that was a splash damage two potion, the second one. I figured we would test both in case it did do damage. It might do it in different quantities, but it doesn't appear to do any damage at all. So my thinking was if damage did some damage to the armor then maybe poison would as well and maybe some of the other ones would but we know that one doesn't and now I've tested all of the others so we can confirm splash potions do absolutely no damage to your armor durability. And our final myth this episode is to do with swords and the haste effect. We have a beacon over there, we have haste too, 
and this affects the swinging animation of our sword. You can see that is moving a lot faster than normal. And some of you wanted to know if this would affect the speed or the rate at which you could attack the mob. So what we're going to do is attack one guy right here with our sword. And we'll do this in survival mode while we have the haste effect on. And then we'll do a comparison with this guy. And using some fancy video editing, we'll be able to see what it's like when we're hitting the guy with the haste effect and what it's like when we're not using it. So we can see from this slowed down side by side footage that the sword on the left with haste 2 isn't dealing damage any faster than on the right. And so we can confirm that haste 2 does not affect the attack speed of mobs. And that is it for this episode of Minecraft Myth Busting. As always, if you've enjoyed yourself, please do leave a like on this video. It'll be greatly appreciated. And if you haven't watched this series before, then subscribe for more and check out the playlist down below in the description box. But that is it from me this episode. So as always, thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.